St. Thomas is one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ, and he is mentioned in the Gospel of John as the, the, the skeptic or the doubting Thomas, and we owe him the famous statement, I believe only when I see. And actually he didn't believe in the resurrection of Christ, and he actually said, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. A few days later, Jesus came back to see his disciples, showed his hands to Thomas, and invited him to touch his wounds. Saint Thomas then said, My Lord and my God, to which Jesus replied, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. So the simple statement, I believe only when I see, has become the leitmotif in a way of rational thinking and science as we know it today. And this way of thinking is also uh, in the continuity of the influence of what happened during the Age of Enlightenment in the 18th century. Because at that time, society went back to rational thinking, to materialism, to uh, balance out the omnipresence of religion, the dogmatic religion that was uh, there at the time. And so today we live really in a polarized world, because on one side we, ha we still have religious dogma, and on the other side we have scientific dogma. So most of the Western countries um, have made of science almost a new religion, because religion has deceived us and we thought we, we, we were going to, to find the meaning of life through religion, since uh, it has deceived us, it's like we are searching elsewhere for the meaning of life and we thought that science would answer those questions. So science is a wonderful tool um, that helps to enhance our lives, it helps to uh, enhance our health um, and overall our you know, everyday life. The problem with science today is that it has locked itself up into this really materialistic way of seeing the world. So anything that's not quantifiable and measurable on a, material year, on a material level has no scientific value. So now we live in a society, for example, where medicine um, sees the human body as a machine, or technology, though it can also serve very positive uh, purposes, is used in a way to fill the void we, we feel inside ourselves. And so it can be, in a way, quite dangerous. But there is an, a, a whole other world beyond our five senses and beyond the material world, and it's the spiritual world and the vibrational world that actually form matter. And this is um, really what uh, quantum physics show us, is that we are all in interconnected in the universe, and that the origin, the origin of life is um, thought and consciousness, and they define thought and consciousness that define matter. So, in my opinion, and I'm not the only one to believe that, I think that um, quantum physics is actually the future of science, and that quantum phys physics will finally um, make it possible to make the link between science and spirituality. So according to the recent discoveries of the physician Nassim Aramein, the atom, which forms matter, is actually uh, made of 99.99% of space. And so that leaves only 0.01% of matter. So it's not the objects that define the space, it's the space that defines the matter. He concludes that the vacuum is actually an extremely dense informational energy field which fills the vacuum. So our bodies, thoughts, and environment are composed of subatomic particles, and this information carries energy. They are waves that form matter, and when they interact with one another, they form the electromagnetic field all around us. So ultimately they form the quantum unified field. So basically we are information in movement, and this information circulates through all the particles of the entire universe. So this might be how we, we can explain um, telepathy, for example. And another interesting uh, study shows that when we um, observe objects on a quantum level, the, the simple fact that we are observing them 
modifies uh, them entirely. So, for example, a particle, a same particle, can be in two different places at the same time, or takes different forms. So it is the observer, the eye, through his intention and his consciousness that defines the object and defines the reality, the objective reality. So in the end, quantum physics show us that we are the, the creators of our reality. So we create reality through our thoughts, through our consciousness. And as we are one unified consciousness, but with in, an individual perspective, we have the power, the individual power, to create an infinite amount of different possible realities. And this is why I consider the statement or the belief, uh, I believe only what I see, to be <laughs> one of the biggest lies ever told to humanity. Because basically, basically it boils down to the belief that things are as they are and we cannot change them. But if thoughts create reality, then what I believe, I see. And it's not the other way around, I see, so I believe. What I believe manifests through the law of attraction. And the law of attraction is the number one law of this universe, which is a law of mirroring through the holographic universe we live in. So the main problem with the law of attraction is that when I have a belief, then I will directly manifest it in my reality. So for example, if I have a belief that I am a failure, um, I'm going to manifest and create a reality where all the situations and all the people will confirm that to me. So that will reinforce even more the belief that I'm a failure. So it's then we get caught up in this vicious circle where our beliefs create our reality and our experiences and our experiences reinforce the belief that is actually the one that is um, the cause for these experiences. So when I think of thought like I'm a failure, what the universe understands is, okay, you're a failure. And as the, the universe is a perfect mirror, it will say, okay, you're a failure, here's proof that you are. So, for example, if I have the belief that um, I have to wake up at 6 every morning to uh, survive and to feed my family and work eight, an 8 hour a day job that I hate and pay my taxes every year and only, you know, uh, content myself with what's left of money and time and that for the rest of my life, then if I hold that belief, I will create that reality for me. And this is why this belief and this statement, I believe only what I see, um, I think has really uh, trapped humanity and locked humanity into a state of servitude, fear and powerlessness. Because like I said earlier, it boils down to the belief that things are what they are and we cannot change them. And the more I believe that, the more I'm going to reinforce that belief. So I really invite you to make the experience yourself. Um, so for example, you can focus on one particular thing for a week, like every day for a couple, couple of minutes, either in meditation or just visualizing as you wish. So for example, let's say we focus on a sunflower. You will see that if you focus on a sunflower a couple of minutes a day, every day for a week, it will start manifesting into your reality. So it can manifest um, through different forms, it can manifest through an image you see on an ad, or for example, uh, you, you drive past a, a sunflower field, or someone brings you a flower bouquet with um, a sunflower in it. And I really invite you to discover the work of Masaru Emoto, who is a Japanese researcher, if you haven't had the chance yet. Because he made really interesting uh, experiences and demonstrated the power of intention and vibrations on water crystals. So basically, he took a group of approximately 2,000 people and asked them to focus a positive intention and a negative intention on water samples. And the results can really be seen under the microscope uh, within the structure of the crystal. And he also did the same thing with um, music. So he plays uh, some classical music or some heavy metal and uh, you can also see the results. So let's not forget our human body is made of 60% of water, so what affects the water also affects us. And he took the experiment even further, so he took two containers and he put some cooked rice in, 
in both. And he put labels on these containers. On one label he wrote, thank you. And on the other label he wrote, you fool. And he put these, uh, these two containers in a school. And he asked the school children to pass in front of these uh, containers every day and to read out loud what was written on the label. And then again, 30 days later, we can see the result where the label that says thank you is intact, the rice is intact, and the other one is completely rotten and molded. Now is the time to become aware of this lie. And now is the time to take our power back as powerful creators and infinite creators of life. And the power we hold is the one to be able to choose what beliefs we have and what reality we want to create for this world. So do we prefer to continue to believe that humanity is doomed because we see all this violence and this hatred in this world? Or do we prefer to believe that humanity is one heart that beats us one in love and that is connected to all the living things across the universe? Really, we are the game changers. We are the ones defining the rules. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And I can assure you that if we choose our beliefs and our thoughts wisely, we will start seeing before our eyes the entire world shift radically and very fast. Satnam.